Hello guys, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. So, a very good afternoon actually. So, today is um, 25 May 2020. It's still in the PKP, Perintah Perkawalan Pergerakan. So, today I'm going to tell you a story about, a little bit about TSSE, Dyson Sertai Solar Cell. So, in Dyson Sertai Solar Cell, so today we're going to highlight on the problem which is recombination problem, Recomb recombination effect. Um, kesan pengumpalan di dalam solar cell. So, Dyson Sertai Solar Cell, cell solar berkepekaan tinggi is a device is a third generation solar cell that can convert um, solar energy into electricity so as you can see solar cell uh, a complete device so made of a uh, two electrode system so you can see the indium tin oxide so normally people use fto glass ito glass fto glass or if people are tending to go into flexible they can use ito pet ito pen that can substitute their substrate so we got the substrate on the both side you can see here so in the middle the main component we should have the counter electrode so typical counter electrode is platinum this is carbon based uh, material so you can substitute into platinum we can substitute into p dot conducting polymer carbon based material nanocrystalline cellulose or multi wall or so on you can use counter electrode so when we are going to study about the DSSC, the field is very vast. So maybe you can just focus on the counter electrode. Or you also can focus on the um, electrolyte. So this is a typical use from Solaronic ZX100 iodolite. Consists of iodide triiodide ion. So you also can use um, cobalt as electrolyte and so on. But typically people are using iodide triiodide. So we are going to discuss why typically people use iodide triiodide as electrolyte. So we got the light scattering layer. So when you're going to study on the photo anode, it's divided into light scattering layer. We got the sensitized photo anode. This the size is the in micrometer. And also we got the TiO2 compact layer. All these three components, TiO2 light scattering layer, sensitized TiO2 photo anode, and TiO2 compact layer fall under the same category which is photo anode so when you're going to study the photo anode you're going to focus on the light scattering layer you study the problem that undergo by the photo anode we're also going to study about the compact layer so after finish so we sandwich both electrode counter electrode and also the photo anode and inject electrolyte in the middle and our dssc device is complete so here Today, we just going to focus on the compact layer. Why scientists, why researcher going to introduce the compact layer? So, what is the effect? So, for the compact layer, actually, they going to reduce the recombination process. Recombination effect in the SSC. So, as recombination in the SSC, there are three possible routes to, occur, to occur. So, the first route is what happen if so before I explaining about this, you must know the basic concept about TSSC. So we're going through how TSSC can generate electricity. So it's quite simple. The main, the main thing that provide the energy in the solar cell is the solar itself, the sunlight. So the sunlight that provide by God, it provide a package of energy, which is we call that a photon in the name of photon or normally people say just sunlight so the sunlight what happened is inside the sunlight we got a photon the photon is a package of energy so when the photon struck the dye molecule so you must understand the third generation dssc compared with silicon solar cell the important things is in dye sensitized solar cell the excitation or the source of electron come from the dye itself. That's why the name is dye sensitized solar cell. So we go back. Photon actually struck the dye molecule. The dye molecule is oxidized. When it's oxidized, it releases an electron. It's oxidized from the ground state to the excited state. Then the dye molecule releases the electron. 
the electron is excited from the ground state to the excited state and what happen the electron move to the nano crystalline TiO2 so typical pupil use TiO2 in the photoanode so maybe you can say this is the the big one the big circle is titanium dioxide the electron will move through the titanium dioxide normally people use other semiconductor also like zinc oxide tin oxide but a lot of people, a lot of researchers lose titanium dioxide because it's photocatalytic active. So what happens when the electron moves to the titanium dioxide? It creates electron hole junction. So you imagine this electron, this electron jump to another TiO2. Then the, when it's jumping, it creates a hole. You can see here D plus is a hole. When the electron jump to another TiO2 atom, it creates a hole, D+. And this part will occupy by electron. Then that means that the alternating positive, negative, positive, negative charge will create a voltage, a potential. So that's why we got a potential from here. Then the electron move to the counter electrode via external circuit where normally people use platinum the the counter electrode act as a catalyst that enable the electron to recombine with the redox electrolyte so redox electrolyte normally iodide triiodide undergo oxidation and reduction process the oxidation of redox electrolytes release back the electron to the dye so the process is complete the electron is giving back to the dye so what happened is this process occur again, again and again, numerous time per second to produce a solar energy because we study in physics, power equal to voltage times current. So we got alternating negative, positive, negative, positive that create a potential and moving electron carry charge that produce a current. That's why we got a new energy. From sunlight, we can convert the sunlight solar energy into electrical energy. Okay, move on to the, our main topic. So, we already understand how the SSE works. So, the problem, the main thing that we're going to discuss here today is the recombination. How and why this recombination effect will reduce the performance of our solar cell. So, before we going to know why, we going to ask how, how the recombination can happen. So recombination can happen in three roads. The first road is after our dye undergo oxidation process and excited, release an electron. Electron is excited from ground state to the excited state. What happened is the electron is moved to the TiO2 nanocrystalline or our semiconductor. Before the electron get to move to the TiO2, what happened? The electron fall back to the ground state of the dye. So it's recombined with the hole. When something is um, released, the electron, it will become a hole, D+. Plus. For example, the electron uh, will recombine with D+, plus, the hole of dye molecule. So what happened, the electron doesn't have the chance, doesn't have the chances to move to the TiO2 to generate the current, they don't have the chances, that's why the recombination will happen. So that's the first route. The second route is, the electron successfully travel to the TiO2, but in the meantime, because the TiO2 nanocrystalline is very thick layer, in the meantime, what happened? The electron of TiO2 will recombine with redox electrolyte. So when that happened, the number of potential produced, the number of electron hole junction will be reduced and reduce the overall generation of photocurrent and voltage. And last but not least is the recombination between electron of the transparent conductive oxide, our substrate, with the redox electrolyte. This also a possible route for the recombination to occur. So, what is this recombination actually? Recombination is actually um, unnecessary recombination of electron that reduce the photocurrent and photovoltage that lead to
to lower power conversion efficiency. There are three possible road. That's why we're going to modify our photo anode to reduce the recombination. So we're going to minimize the loss of photocurrent and photo voltage during the DSSC process. So the first road can be overcome by what? By having a suitable uh, suitable type of dye because suitable type of dye like normally in the market is ruthenium based dye N719 is quite good because it's quite stable kinetically stable so the electron does not necessarily going to recombine with the dye if you have a very stable dye like ruthenium based dye so for the second road we can prevent by having a good electrolyte like iodide triiodide because it's kinetically stable and last but not least, a lot of researchers did um, a modification on the substrate. They add a layer called TiO2 compact layer. Or they can use other semiconductor, such as zinc oxide, tin oxide, to make a layer called compact layer or blocking, la or blocking layer or facivation layer in between the TCO and the photoanode because they can create a barrier a very thin barrier to avoid the recombination between the substrate and the redox electrolyte and the same things all this can be overcome by having a good dye a good electrolyte and a compact layer in between TCO and redox electrolyte the main purpose is to reduce recombination to avoid the unnecessary recombination of electron with the redox electrolyte or the dye itself so we're going to have uh, the electron to complete the cycle when the electron complete the cycle without unnecessary recombination it can produce higher power conversion efficiency so it's quite simple so today topic we're going to discuss about recombination so i hope everybody know so recombination is bad process that occur in the photo anode, normally in photo anode. So we going a lot of researcher tackle this by produce um, a new dye, new electrolyte, or by having a compact layer in between TCO and also uh, photo anode the TIL2. So what happened is in the end by having reduced a recombination process you can get a very good performance of the SSC. So I think that's all. So maybe in the next video, we're going to elaborate a little bit detail about the characterization that confirm whether our material have a good blocking ability or not. So I think that's all. So this is the recombination process. So here how the SSC works. So that's all. Thank you.